So we're gonna open sacred space. We have our beautiful sisters of light over here playing the sound. And I will go ahead with my crystal harp and I want you to envision and bring in all of the avatars of light. The Christ in light. Making sacred space in your heart. Opening the portal and allowing all that is good to come and be with us today. I'm going to go ahead and bring the crystal harp while we bring in all the angels, the archangels, all the accompaniment of heaven, bringing from heaven down into earth. unfolding, whereby all spiritual clouds are dispelled, impurity and air cleansed from the realms of spirit and matter. The age of light and joy is being born through your infinite compassion. Misguided forces waken unto truth and negative practices cease, while forces of light unhindered restore the world to peace. All of nature receives your loving influence and finds its rightful place. Peaceful clouds move across brilliant skies and the fragrance of countless flowers floats upon the air. Abundant harvests glorify the earth, every corner filled with happy voices. Boundaries between countries vanish, and ancient conflicts disappear as if dreams. All people are united, encircled by your light, and guided by your wisdom. Through service to humanity, all are blessed with health, peace, and prosperity. Great God of light, strengthen us with courage and wisdom to follow your will and realize paradise on earth. We say amen, 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 amen and amen. Now what I'm wanting to get everyone used to is this beautiful original Lord's Prayer, as well as This Aramaic one, which is beautiful. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see if one of our sisters from Pike. Would anyone like to read? No? Yeah. We have a beautiful reverend here. We have the Lord's Prayer, but this is the Aramaic. And this is a translation of it. I want you to actually read who the translation is and where they can find it at because I think sure. that's very important and it gives it more beauty. So if you can come in so that they can see sure. there. Beautiful. So this prayer, it is, uh, or actually the translation is by Neil Douglas Klotz, um, PhD, and it's abwoon.org. So you can find it there. I may not say this uh, totally correctly, but I will try. Um, o Earth Year, Father Mother of the Cosmos, you create all that moves in light. Tonight, hour, I can to yours, so that we walk and kings and queens with every creature. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Forgive our hidden past, the sacred chains, as we consistently forgive what others hide. Deceived neither by the outer nor the inner, free us to walk the path with joy. From you is born all of rule and will, the power and life to do, the song that beautifies all from age to age, it renews. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Beautiful, beautiful. She is our new reverend <laughs> and was ordained. So we're going to give her some work to do, right? <laughs> now, what I'd like to also, because we're going to end with the Hopi, um, but I'm going to, we have the regular Lord's Prayer. And I'll go ahead and say that unless Joe, you would like to say it? Would you like to come up and say the regular Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in the heavens, let thy name be sanctified. May thy kingdom come. Let your will take place as it is as it is in the heavens, so also upon the earth. Give us today the bread for this day. Forgive us our sins as we have, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into the hands of temptation and deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. So I just wanted uh, everyone to get used to both interpretations because the first one is literally from the Aramaic words of Jesus, which gives it a fuller meaning for us. I'm also going to be talking about the Hopi today and their prophecies as it relates today with the uh, apocalypse, the times. And that they have also said that we've been given a reprieve and we have a choice to make. And so I think it's very appropriate that I'm going to read to you their beautiful prayer for their creator. And we're going to bring in all the indigenous cultures around the world and even Plato today. <laughs> so we're, we're a worldwide global phenomenon. All my relations. I honor you in the circle of life with me today. I am grateful for this opportunity to acknowledge you in this prayer. To the creator for the ultimate gift of life, I thank you. To the mineral nation that has built and maintained my bones and all foundations of life experience, I thank you. To the plant nation that sustains my organs and body and gives me healing herbs for sickness, I thank you. To the animal nation that feeds me from your own flesh 
and offers your loyal companionship in this walk of life. I thank you. To the human nation that shares my path as a soul upon the sacred wheel of earthly life, I thank you. To the spirit nation that guides me invisibly through the ups and downs of life and for carrying the torch of light through the ages, I thank you. To the four winds of change and growth, I thank you. You are all my relations, my relatives, without whom I would not live. We are in the circle of life together, coexisting, co-dependent, co-creating our destiny. One not more important than the other, one nation evolving from the other, and each yet independent and dependent upon the one above and the one below. All of us a part of the great mystery. Thank you for this life. This is a beautiful, profound statement, and we have uh, American Indians that, to thank us to keeping a grateful heart and understanding that we are all interconnected. So today, I'm going to be talking about the apocalyptic floods, both present and in ancient times. And I'm going to share with you some of the research I've done. I'll tell you how many, um, what time I went to bed. <laughs> I got so immersed in this, and I'm excited to bring to you some of the things that I didn't even know. So that's why I was up late doing the research, but there's some books of Adam. That were given to Enoch, that were uh, they were instructed literally to give them to our generations. So that's unbelievable that we are supposed to have these gifts. Adam gave them to his children, and Enoch was the seventh son, the seventh generation from Adam. He instructed his descendants to give them to the generations that would need them. And we need to, we need them today. So we need to go back to the early beginnings, all the way back to Adam, grab some of this beautiful knowledge that was gifted to us. So in many different timelines, cultures and regions around the world, there have been myths of the apocalyptic floods, wiping all out but a few members of humanity. Flood legends abound from the pre diluvian times to the Genesis flood, with Enoch explaining that the world had become wicked in its ways and needed to start over with Noah's pure bloodline. Other cultures have similar legends, such as the Mesopotamian Epic of Gilgamesh, the Hopi Third World Flood, the India Indic, uh, legend of Manu and Nazca, and even the Thailand a story of the flood of Akhtheanen. Plato makes references to great floods, including one that occurred in the 10th millennium BCE, which was named after Deculeon, and he detailed the sinking of Atlantis. And those dates just happen to match up with what today's scientists now see. And I'll go into that in just a little bit of detail, but there's actually nanoparticles of diamonds found <laughs> in the Americas that show that that had only been hap you know, happening under sustained heat and pressure. And then there's the geologists that have found that there's soot when they go back in, in through the air, the, the rock, and they know that there was a flood. They know there was a cataclysm. They know that something happened during the Younger Dryas days. So we know that geologically from scientists today, but you see references of this throughout all the indigenous cultures, throughout our own Bible with Noah, but also Plato. And I'll go into some of Plato's uh, you know, wonderful explanations of things. <coughs> uh, the tales of the floods are there. However, they're always connected with the savior, the savior that is to come. So even around the world, you'll have these stories of uh, Quetzalcoatl, they'll have the seven sages that come to kind of come back in after this flood. And the Indians have the ant people that saved them, and it took them into caverns, 
And then when they came out, they taught them all that they needed to know. And you have this in South America and many of the different uh, cultures around the world. So you'll see the sages. What's interesting is that they'll talk about uh, it's this is what caused the, the fall of the Incan Empire is that they had the stories that the, the gods would return and that they would be white and would have beards. And that's how the Incans were fooled when the Spaniards came. So <laughs> then they took them down. So, so because of these legends of these saviors that had come in the past, after the flooding had taken place, after these catastrophes had come, do you see? And that the saviors would come and they taught them the arts, they taught them everything that they would need, including how to rebuild plants, um, tools. And so that's, you have the stories of the flood and you have the stories of these saviors that are to come. Plato tells us in the first place, you remember a single deluge only, but here were many previous ones. In the next place, you do not know that there formerly dwelt in your land the fairest and noblest race of men which ever lived, and that you and your whole city are descended from a small seed of rem remnant of them which survived. This is Plato telling us this, do you see? So it's not only in the South American legends, it's not only in Egypt. Egypt has the same stories of the flood, right? All of this was unknown to you. For many generations, the survivors of that destruction died, leaving no written word. And that's, you'll see it just in remnants. Do you see this? Across, across all cultures, there was a flood. Somehow, there were others here that were able to come. And then they saved the information and gifted it back to humanity for those that did survive. So what I want to do is read a little bit of Plato, and then I want to talk to you about the Zohar. But with Plato, and we're going to talk about the comets, he was able to even kind of speak about the comets and asteroids. So let me give you just a little bit of what Plato's talking about. There have been and will be again many destructions of mankind arising out of many causes. The greatest have been brought about by the agencies of fire and water and other lesser ones by innumerable other causes. And that's what we have to talk about today. What do we have? What power is within us to make a different choice? There is a story which even you have preserved, that once upon a time, Papianon, the son of Helios, having yoked the steeds in his father's chariot, because he was not able to drive them in the path of his father, burnt up all that was upon the earth and was himself destroyed by a thunderbolt. So this is Plato talking of other floods, right? But he's also going to tell us, now this has the form of a myth but really signifies a declination of the bodies moving in the heavens around the earth and a great conflagration of things upon the earth, which reoccurs after long intervals. And we need to take note of that because Plato's explaining to us that there's something happening in the heavens. And this that Earth goes through these periods of warming, cooling, maybe there's comets, <coughs> maybe there's meteor impacts. And well, I'll even show you some of these Babylonians' um, centrical seals that will show you that back then they showed that there was 12 planets. And then they show 11, and they have them in all the right orders, but there could have been one planet, Tiamat, that was destroyed. And that could be what this younger Dryas is. When you have this unbelievable cataclysm that hit Earth 12,000, eight or 900 years ago. And that even the Babylonians saw this, and you can see it, this is proof, that they knew that the sun was the center of the universe, 
they had all the planets in the right orbits, but they had two extra, and then one disappeared. So that's why a lot of individuals and the scientists are looking at that. Could that have been what the ancients are talking about and they were affected by? That there were two planets, one rammed into the other, Tiamat lost, it was Marduk and Tiamat, and that's, yep. It, yep. And then that's where you have the remnants of the, you know, the asteroid belt. So when you see that, we have geological evidence that that happened. I also wanted to bring to you that, yes, we have warming periods, yes, we have cooling periods on Earth. And we even have the electromagnetic uh, energy around Earth, the magnetic poles, and they're moving. And they've been showed, they're showing right now they have a 10% reduction in the electromagnetic poles right now. And, but that can come and go. You see that goes through different dips and it increases. So right now, the sun may be a little bit more brilliant than we might. Maybe there's a little bit of a change, but also that comes and goes. It's in a rhythm. And we also have to realize that there's cosmological phenomena that's happening to the Earth that's contributing to this global warming. It is not just exactly what they're telling us, right? So we always have to have a discerning ear on things. So we have cosmological changes that affect Earth, and Plato is even talking about it in the heavens. We may not ever have to see another planet, you know, have a catastrophe like happened to Earth 12,800 or 900 years ago. But that also will tell you that might have been what happened to Atlantis, but it happened all over the world. So, so this is what he also tells us. At such times, those who live upon the mountains and in the dry and lofty places are more liable to destruction than those who dwell by rivers or on the seashore. When on the other hand, so he's telling you two different types of things that could happen, right? The gods purge the earth with a deluge of water. The survivors in your country are herdsmen and shepherds who dwell in the mountains, but those who, like you, live in the cities are carried by the rivers into the sea. So he's showing you one's fire, one's water. So we have different natural phenomena that, that affects the earth. And then what we're talking about, which I think is really important here, is that we have, in our hands, we have the ability now to write for the generations of the future, to keep this. And is that what the, the ancients of the past were telling us in these stories of the floods and look to the heavens? So that we have to be aware and know what's happening, right? And to just, you know, be cautious. But there's there also a certain periods of time and people have given different ages that they're looking at either 12,600 years or 26,000 years, they're across the different, um, I guess, cultures are talking about when these times are gonna be upon us, but we don't know. And at this point in time, the Hopi are saying that we've been given a reprieve, and it is us to make, it's up to us to make the right decisions. If we think of Plato, He's talking about Atlantis. Yes, there was a catastrophe that affected all of the Earth, probably from that planet, right? Impacting another and then the debris coming at us. But is there something that we can do to prevent what happened in Atlantis and these other ages? And I would say to you, yes, that we have God consciousness within us. And this is, has been suppressed, and that was the time of the great revealing, and all the ancient teachings are coming up and out. And we can affect great change with our consciousness, but we have to make the right choices. So some of this is to be discerning, to know what's up. In Atlantis, the legends are they let technology get ahead of their ethics, get ahead of the me, out like in pure life. And even Enoch is instructing us, his people during the times, because he was prophesizing the flood, to be pure. And 
we have to know what the choice is and make the right choices as go around. And we can do that if we have discernment and knowledge. And then bring us into a beautiful golden age. You know uh, the, how the Lord Melchizedek is connected to all of that? You know that story? The Melchizedek was connected with, with Enoch. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so there's a, there's a book called uh, Secrets of the Flower of Life, uh, and it's written by uh, this guy, Jungle Melchizedek. Yes. And he tells a story as when he was channeling Lord Melchizedek, Lord Melchizedek told him this story about um, uh, he was trying to find a way to help humanity survive this incident that happened. Younger Dryas era, yes. And Lord Melchizedek went through all throughout you know, the universe trying to find an answer. And finally, he found a version of himself far, far, far in the distant future version of himself. And he told them, you need to build what we call, what, what we became, came to know as a, um, a Christ consciousness grid around the planet. And this would, like you, like you were saying, allow us to. Um, generate even stronger fields of, of light, uh, uh, increase our light quotient even faster, and also reduce the, um, the, the frequency, the vibration that we need to, to move over into higher dimensional differential frequencies. And when he came back, when Lord Melchizedek came back, he created this, this uh, energy grid, this Christ, Christ consciousness energy grid around the planet, and that is still helping us to this day to uh, ascend and evolve. And I would say that's what we are to do right now, today. Continue on that building. Do you see that? Yeah. And Enoch is stating that. Yeah. So you're seeing multiple <clears throat> sources telling us what to do to avert a cataclysm. Our consciousness is way more powerful. Together, humanity holds this in its palm of its hands. We have to recognize that and build that, that energy can create amazing, wonderful things on this planet. And maybe this is the time we get it right. We don't go astray, but enough of us have to be aware. We have to know what's happening, we have to work together, and it's gonna be a worldwide effect, but we have to work together in a worldwide manner. And that has been suppressed, is that it's, we are absolutely divinely made and that's what I found so fascinating was that Adam was given a book that even the angels, he was given a book of instruction that even the angels didn't have. And that's how special we are. And if we unveil that, there's no telling what we can do from humanity's standpoint, what we can accomplish. And now is the time to do this. But we do have to be discerning, not fall into fear. Do you see that? And to know our Christ itself work with the grids of light within our own bodies, within the entire planet. And with that consciousness, we can prevail. We can, we can right all the wrongs and we can bring in and usher in that golden age. So let me, I'll just continue a little bit with Plato and I wanna to read to you a little bit of the Zohar and the, the, these wonderful books that Adam does have that we need to find and uncover, right? <laughs> because we need this knowledge that was gifted to Adam to be able to accomplish these wonderful things. Um, so here, I've already read to you, watch this. But afterwards there occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, all your warlike men in a body sank into the earth and the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared in the depths of the sea. So Plato is again giving us clues and we can do something different. And all, all the myths around Atlantis are talking about this misuse of technology. And we are standing in a precipice today with the same type of decision. And if we get it right, like the Hopis, the Hopis have a prophecy that there's two roads. 
And if you take one road, it leads to great prosperity. And this is on the prophecy rock. And I'll go into this other one later on this because they have other heads of this, the prophecies leading up to this decision, right? But the other one will lead us into devastation. So we make, we are at this crucible, right? Where we make the right decision, work for good with all of humanity and build, build up the grids. Okay, now I wanted to give you this and then we'll do the Zohar. I thought this was fascinating because this is science backing up all the legends around the world. And I give you a little bit of this information because it's like real diamonds, <laughs> which I thought was fascinating. Roughly 12,900 years ago, massive global cooling kicked in abruptly along with the end of the line for some 35 different mammal species, including the mammoth, as well as the so-called Clovis culture of prehistoric North Americans. Various theories have been proposed for the die-off, ranging from abrupt climate change to overhunting. We believe that it was probably this planet, right? Now with more information is coming out. So they, but what they have found is that there are nano diamonds in the sediments from this time period, and it points to an alternative to an alternative um, that there was a massive explosion or explosions by a fragmentary comet. That backs up the whole story of Tiamat, a planet coming with a collision, right? That we literally have nano diamonds. And so they believe that, that because of the nano diamonds, that it's similar to or even larger than the event in Siberia in 1908. Remember that great big impact. So they're now realizing that did happen, and that was 12,900 years ago, that produced diamonds. I believe it's six sites that we know it. Sediments from six sites across North America, which is Murray Springs, Arizona, Bull Creek, Oklahoma, Ganey, Michigan, Topper, South Carolina, Lake Hinn, Manitobi, and Chirobot, Alberta, which is in Canada, yielded such teensy diamonds which only occur in sediment exposed to extreme temperatures and pressures, such as those from an explosion or impact. So this was published in uh, Science Today. I just wanted to let you know that there are your scientific evidence for this kind of impact story, the asteroids. So now let me talk about, which I found fascinating, the Zohar. Are, many of, are any of you aware of the Zohar? It's a, it's a Jewish, okay, it's a, an ancient Jewish, Jewish text. And it's very interesting because I didn't know this. And I want to read this to you. And I'm going to give you the book I'm reading it out of because I want everyone to read it. <laughs> so here, this is the Ark of the Millions of Years. And this is by E.J. Clark and Alexander Agnew. PhD. So um, it's wonderful. Absolutely. So this is the one I'm reading from. And he uh, takes all of the ancient texts and kind of gives little pieces of all of them, which I love, because you have fragments everywhere that he's kind of compiling them together. The Zohar states, God sent a book down to Adam, and by the hand of the angel Raziel, the angel in charge of the holy mysteries, from which he became acquainted with the supernal or supernatural divine or heavenly wisdom. It came later into the hands of the sons of God, the wise of their generation, and whoever was privileged to pursue it could learn from it the supernal, supernatural, divine or heavenly wisdom. So this is really important. The book contained inscriptions revealing the sacred wisdom and 72 branches of wisdom expounded so as to show the formation of 670 inscriptions of higher mysteries. 
So this is taking you from earth all the way up into the multitude of the heavens, giving you the instruction, the template for this. And this was gifted to Adam. In the middle of the book was a secret writing explaining the thousand and five hundred keys which were not revealed even to the holy angels, and all of which were locked up in this book until it came into the hands of Adam. That's precious. That tells us that we are divine, that Adam, as a human here on earth, he was given that which the angels were given. And we are made in the image of God. And God gives us this instruction manual. And this is really important. And these books were gifted to Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam. Do you see that? And that's where we have to find them. <laughs> okay, go delving in there, right? <clears throat> so there's 1,500 keys. God sent the angel, Hadrial, to warn Adam not to reveal the glory of the master to the angels. For him, to him alone, was given the privilege to know the glory of the master. Therefore, Adam kept the book by him secretly until he left the Garden of Eden. Now look what happens. While he was there, he studied it diligently and utilized constantly the gift of the master until he discovered sublime mysteries, which were not known even to the celestial ministers. This book was brought down to Adam by the master of mysteries preceded by three messengers. When Adam was expelled from the Garden of Eden, he tried to keep hold of this book, but it flew out of his hands, as God took it from him, because he was so upset, right? He thereupon supplicated God with tears for its return, and it was given back to him by the angel Raphael, in order that wisdom might not be forgotten of men and they might strive to obtain knowledge of their master. <laughs> Adam left it to his son Seth, who transmitted it in turn to posterity, and so on until it was received by Enoch, the seventh from Adam. Tradition further tells us that Enoch also had another book which came from the same place as the book of the generations of Adam. This is the source of the book known as the Book of Enoch. And I have a copy of it, and I'm going to be reading to it for you today. Okay. When God took him, this is Enoch, he showed him all supernal mysteries and the tree of life in the midst of the garden and its leaves and branches, all of which can be found in this book. Happy are those of exalted piety to whom the supernal wisdom has been revealed. That's our quest right there. And from whom it will not be forgotten forever. As it says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and his secret to make them know it. So what happened with this book is that that information that unlock the mysteries of mysteries, the watchers that hold it, the Nephilim. And as we know in the book of Enoch, and he will explain it, that there was horrible mixing of the bloods, and giants were there that would devour people, that there were uh, you know, animals and humans half together, and they were using all these mysteries to do unfair unheard of things on earth, and it was polluted. So what they're saying is that there, were, there was going to be a flood to cleanse the earth, you see? And that's where there was a reason for it. And then Noah, as you know, the story of Noah was taken with his family in the ark, and there's all kinds of wonderful stories about that as to why the race survived right? Impurity. And so, interesting enough, they said in some of the ancient literature that, it, that those that had a pure heart, they were taken up. 
And so that when the flood came, it was only the un unpure that had been destroyed. So here, I want to tell you again, this is in Moses 6, 5, 6. And uh, this is in the Great Pearl of Spirit in the Mormons, where you're going to find the Book of Remembrance. This is the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price. And this is where it'll talk to you about this Book of Remembrance that Adam had too. So there's other sources that talk of this. This is Moses 6, 5 to 7. So that's what I wanted you to, to, to know, and then I'm going to go into little details on this. And a book of remembrance was kept in the which was recorded the, in the language of Adam, what was given unto many as called upon God to write by the spirit of inspiration. And by them their children were taught to read and write having a language which was pure and undefiled. Now this same priesthood, which was in the beginning, shall be in the end of the world also. And that, which is probably the, the order of the Melchizedek, you see, the priesthood. Yes. That's exactly it, right there. And this is even in, you know, this is from Joseph Smith and the Mormons, but you'll start to see these different pieces across all religions that will speak of this. So hang on, I want to give you about Enoch, and I'm going to, because there's, let me see if I can, I gave you the pearl of great price, but I'm going to read to you a little bit about Enoch. Enoch is talking about he built a city, and they were pure, and he kept everyone pure. And if you remember this, he, his whole entire city, he was lifted up to God. He never had to die. And his entire city of Zion was lifted up. Okay? But they kept their hearts pure and undefiled. And so that, to me, is what we need to do today. And here it is. Other books were given to Enoch from the Lord's storeplaces. An archangel named Vitriol was appointed by the Lord to write down all the doings of the Lord. Vitriol was commanded by the Lord to show and interpret to Enoch the books and let Enoch make copies. Enoch states that the wonderful books were fragrant with myrrh. So we're able to get these books. Enoch has permission. He's actually been instructed to give it to all humanity, right? God commanded Enoch to preach repentance and salvation to all the children of Adam. He was able to successfully combat the evils of the time and segregate and raise up a righteous culture called Zion, meaning the pure in heart. So as Enoch did back then, and his entire city and him were lifted up into the heavens, we have that choice today of being pure in heart, to know right from wrong, to make the right choices, to remain pure in heart, you see, gather the knowledge onto us. And we are able to lift earth into a higher frequency. We can avert catastrophes. But what I want to do is we need to find all these books. <laughs> that Enoch had. There's 366 of them, by the way. But we have permission to get them. Enoch was given permission. Watch this. I also wanted to tell you this that I, I read. The flood came to wash the sins of the earth, but not before Methuselah died. Did you know that? I didn't know that. So it, it was a grace of God that allowed Enoch because he was so beloved, and Methuselah was his son. It was not until Methuselah died that the floods came upon the face of the earth. I thought that was nice. Was Methuselah was Noah's father or grandfather or something? No, Methuselah was his son, was Enoch's son. Enoch's son. Yeah. 
Before he was taken by the Lord, Enoch begat three sons, Methuselah, Elisha, and Eaglemech, and two daughters, Malka and Nahiah, and he was the great-grandfather of Noah. Yes. Does that make sense now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so now you can see the sequence. It's Enoch, the Methuselah, then Noah. Yeah, I knew there was a like, yes. familial relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, just so you now, realize... I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, yeah. but, but I mean, if you want to extend that further, that entire line extends to King David, I believe, which starts the line of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. So they said like, Jesus is in that lineage. Yeah, yeah. You can see that. And so that's where the bloodlines, I mean, there's something, you know, with the DNA. Yeah. That you have the bloodlines that have this purity that they're speaking of. Yeah. But it's also purity of heart, yeah. purity of intentions, purity of thought. Because Jesus says, as you think, so you are, right? Yeah. So we have to keep pure hearts, and that's even the city of Enoch. Pure, not fearful, pure, but wise knowing what is right and wrong and choosing the right. So just so you, you can see this, and then I'm going to read from Enoch. Watch this. The Lord commanded Enoch's children. So Enoch was given these books from Adam, 366, right? The Lord commanded Enoch's children to distribute the books to their children's children, and from generation to generation, and from nation to nation. Through the books were committed to the keeping of men. The Lord also instructed two special angels, Ariok and Parnuka, to be the guardians of the writings, so that they may not be lost in the deluge to come. So they were protected, these books, right? And that were supposed to be gifted to generations to generations in the future. They were further instructed to protect them until the last age and the time for their complete disclosure and understanding had come. And so that really, now would be the time for us to get those books and have full disclosure of what we need to do to make the right choices and to have the ability to do so. So uh, I wanted to read to you a little bit from Enoch and then also give you the Hopis because I'm to be mindful of time here. I've got so much to read here. <laughs> so, um, and also wanted to tell you, I think I have it written down, what are some of these books and see if we can't find them. It's the Book of Remembrances. Uh, so, let me see if I have written. I have, thought I had the, the names of the books that we're talking about so we can do a little bit more of our own research. Here it is. There's 366 books. The Book of Adam is one. The Book of Divine Wisdom is the other. The Book of the Angel Raziel and then the Book of Enoch. And I have the Book of Enoch with me and I'm going to read that right and so here in these books if we have the correct instructions and all the knowledge we are to be that force of good and make correct choices so we can become this priesthood right that the Zohar and Enoch was told to that in the end of days the priesthood is there we are gifted with the right knowledge we are to be that priesthood we are to carry that torch with the understanding through here so let me just read to you a little bit from uh, Enoch. I read to you from the Zohar, and I wanted to show you because Enoch will tell you in his book here, and we're already told that he came and went up to the storehouse of knowledge and gifted, was gifted through the angels from this, right? He'll talk to you, the watchers. He'll tell you their names. He'll tell you that they made a pact with each other. And that's where you get Genesis 6, when the, when the angels uh, they fell from heaven, they decided to come in and mate with the daughters of you know, mankind, saw that they were fair and cold, right? And then created these, you know, I guess half beings, right? But that this came to a horrible end, 
that it was hurting humanity when pride went up. And that's when God said, we have to, we have to change this. We have to wash the world pure with purification, right? But what does, what does he say? This is Enoch. This is one of the books of instruction that we're supposed to have. And now this is page 153. This is the book of Enoch, the prophet, okay? From Enoch, the book of instruction. And now let me exhort you, O oh my children, to love righteousness and to walk in it. For the paths of righteousness are worthy of acceptation, but the paths of iniquity shall suddenly fail and be diminished. To men of note in their generation, the paths of oppression and death are revealed, but they keep far from them and do not follow them. That's the choice the whole wizard told us. We have the choice. You stay away from the things that are unhealthy and not natural, right? Now, too, let me exhort you who are righteous not to walk in the paths of evil and oppression, nor in the paths of death. Approach them not that you may not perish, but covet and choose for yourselves righteousness in a good life. I mean, that's really clear what Enoch is telling us to do in, the, in, the, in his prophecy. Walk in the paths of peace, that you may live and be found worthy. Retain my words in your innermost thoughts, and obliterate them not from your hearts. For I know that sinners counsel men to commit crime craft. And is that not what's happening today? You have to always be aware of what's happening and how truths can be twisted. They'll give you a half, half truth and twist it, you see? So you have to go to God, to go to the source, not to listen to men, media, whatever they're generating fears about, right? We, this, during these times, we have to connect with the source. Find the purity of right actions and make the right choice this time on this planet, right? For I know that sinners counsel men to commit crime craftily. They are not found in every place, nor does every counsel possess a rule of them. Woe to those who build up iniquity and oppression and who lay the foundation of fraud, for suddenly shall they be subdiverted and never obtain peace. Woe to those who build up their houses with crime, for from their very foundation shall the houses be demolished, and by the sword shall they themselves fall. Those too who acquire gold and silver shall justly and suddenly perish. So he's talking about, and this is what Jesus was saying, store your treasures up in heaven, not on earth, right? And we have to be ever vigilant about what choices we are making and keep the pure heart pure intentions, keep our bodies healthy, making all the right decisions. We are the pure Adonic grace. So we are to live close to purity on earth, right? And even when we talk about, here. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Hopis. and give their prophecy as to what they're saying. And that's, I wanted to, to talk to you about that. But what are we to question today? Because even Enoch is saying that in the end times, you have, you know, the deceit, it'll be craftily delivered to you. And you have to know what is right and wrong and have purity, your thought, intention, and in your body, right? To, to be the righteous, to be the just to be the pure. So let's ask ourselves today, we have to question everything. Even when we're talking about what is the media talking about, you know, global warming, they're kind of taking away all of our rights, right and left, that there's global warming. Well, they know that there's been global warmings and thaws for 200,000 years. Rick Braden actually paid to have that, the, the ice court, you know, court out in Antarctica, and they can show and overlay it. The Earth is not just a little bit warmer than it was 200,000 years ago. 
that you go through these trends, right? You, you even have, in case you didn't know, there was an eruption in January, in January 2021. It was on a grand scale in the Pacific that there was a volcano that erupted that literally set a sonic boom around the earth twice and shot water into the stratosphere. That heated the oceans. That's one of the reasons why we're having such a hot summer, right? You heat the oceans, then you heat the air. So you have to realize that Earth has its own natural rhythms and undulations, right? Yes. But we also have man-made disruptions like HARP. Yes, we have HARP. They're mapping the, the oceans, which is disrupting. When they're mapping that sonar, and they're doing that even under the oceans and then harp in the, in the air. That makes you think of Atlantis, right? How about CERN? <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's spraying. You know, if we chop down too many trees, Florida, for example, is a microclimate kind of climate, and the trees make water. If you chop down too many trees, you have drought. We've been developing in Sarasota, and, and I think one of the things contributing to our area because there's more water in other parts, rain in other parts of Florida, is our development. We kind of hit a plateau. Uh, yeah, we should have studied about how much trees do we need to have per square mile to keep the ecosystem balanced, but we don't do that here. So if we can learn those things, then maybe we can head off some of the natural disasters. Yeah, I mean, so I think we need to have practical with the or more like the heart first, and then the heart cares enough to want to do the practice. With compassion and love yes. and purity. Where we right? care about the earth and not only money. And it has to be money in balance. Yeah. Okay. And power. Yes. And power. <laughs> yes, Ruth. In Scotland, recently they just cut down 16 million trees. Ooh. Why? Just for, for building houses? Put, I think they're going to put uh, windmills up. Oh yeah, whole power, yeah. Oh my god. Sixteen million. There are other ways to grab power if we wouldn't be yeah. so I mean we can take Tesla stuff or that movie the Thrive too. You know, we're just getting in our own way. We can stop getting in our own way, but that's where you're right. We have to purify our heart first so we can stop getting in our own way. Our and and it is it, greed. A yeah, lot of is. times exactly. A lot of it's greed with the corporations. They don't care about Earth. Right. But then you have all these other institutions and organizations that are making decisions that are affecting Earth. Yeah. And was that not also probably what happened during the yeah. Atlantis? Do you see? Yeah. With the technology. Easter Island, they chopped mm -hmm. down all the trees there and mm -hmm. the neighbors gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we have to have balance, yeah. but we have to have that pureness of our thought in action that that comes from the heart yeah and we can't diminish right the fact that there's these natural phenomena that's going to happen anyway the milky way is actually heating up we have you know other planets actually the molten cores and some of the planets are heating up earth is heating okay we have these natural phenomena but what is society doing that can that can affect these natural rhythms if we're not careful, we're going to follow uh, Carl Schwab's dictum. This is what Getting I'm afraid of. Getting rid of all the people on the planet, you won't have to worry about it. Well, but then this, see, this is that global reset that they're trying to enact. In oh, 2030, you will yeah. own nothing and be happy, and they want to computer chip you with every thought, and they want to control you. I mean, this is it's unbelievable what he's yeah, trying to enact. Right? It, it is the World Economic Forum in the UN. And they're actually signing a pandemic treaty. They've already done it. And America, uh, the 94 no. nations have to sign on. It's horrible. They're taking away your sovereign rights with us. We're, we, that's when we have a choice to say no. And we have to work together to say no to the AI, right? No to the computer chipping. No to Klaus Schwab. Yes. To Mother Earth. Yes, for we are supposed to be the custodians and caretakers of Earth right? to avert this tragedy that befell Atlantis, that befell other time periods in, in ancient history. We have that choice, but we are on that precipice. And that's what the Hopis are saying. 
we choose which choice do you make? And I truly believe it's the AI, the Klaus Schwab, this, this is suppression of all humanity. He's the director of the World Economic Forum, and he's intimately entwined in there. And you want to talk about half-truths. They, they want the world's population to be only in the millions. Yeah. And to have, live in harmony with nature, OK, well, well is the whole planet going to die? All of, the, all of us are going to die then? And they get to control yeah. for everything? Do you see that is the, exactly is that what the spraying of it? What are the atmosphere? Oh, yeah. Oh, we've we've got us. Bill Gates with uh, oh, the spraying. Bill them. Gates is spraying, I think it's calcium. Cadmium. What is it? Cadmium. Cadmium. And he, with his monies, by the way, with no permission from any of us, he's spraying this in the atmosphere to dim the sun. Do you have any idea okay. what that's going to do to the planet? So, so there, there's, an, there's another um, possibility for why he's doing that. Because if we start, we're talking about dimming the sun, or at least reducing the radiation, you know, right. like radiation mm -hmm. from the sun. Warming. One of the major th threats to life on this planet is something called a gamma ray burst. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. right now, one of the closest stars to us, Betelgeuse, is about to go supernova. And if it does, and if it's in the right angle, it could shoot a gamma ray, a burst of gamma rays right towards us. So it's possible that this is a preventive measure to um, strengthen our cells against, you know, uh, yeah. highly uh, radioactive, radi high radiation. That's, that's what, that's what that, my guess is. But what about, we don't know what we don't know. Sure. Have you any idea what the doctors will tell you to do? or the scientific community, and in all good conscience, they think that's the truth at the they, time. Right. Five years later, you go, oh, you oh my God, good. it was wrong. And so he may think he's doing something good, and the ultimate, yeah. what if you kill all the plant life? Yeah, that's true. I mean, we you see a we couple we degrees. Uh -huh. That's true. We don't know the long-term effects. Right. But I mean, as far as Bill Gates was, if you look at you know the stuff that he's done, at least since he's like left Microsoft, he's in this institute of whole lot of really beneficial uh, programs for for people and some horrible ones well yes. well, well so, 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 <laughs> some questionable ones yeah but I, I like you said i think he's trying to do the right thing as many but he could possible. be misguided he's got you. He, he, See? he can he, could he be. can be he could misguided be. and that's yeah. what it takes discernment yeah because he doesn't know what he doesn't know and this is that's someone right. who's only what yeah. got College degree, maybe. Who do you think he is? Right, maybe. Right. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know what I you do. don't know. Yeah. And he doesn't have the right. He doesn't have our permission as citizens to enact something of a global phenomenon like this, just like yeah. CERN doesn't. I have no idea if they're going to be opening up portals and dimensions over there. CERN is scary as all get out. Yeah. And yes, are they spraying stuff in the air that's affecting us and polluting yeah. the water? Right, and all this, all these things. But is it not our choice to look, really look? Because truths and lies, they twist them. Mm -hmm. And that's how you don't know what you don't know when you go to source to find your knowledge. And that's how you'll discern the between the two. But that's exactly part of the problem. And I would encourage you to look more into Klaus Schwab and wow. more into Bill Gates and all of his connections yeah. with all well, these programs that he's doing that has hurt people, okay? He it, yeah. in Africa with the he's done he horrible things without, yeah. telling, oh, without sure. telling people in Africa with the vaccines. He's yeah. injured people, and by the way, I'm not saying he's a saint. I'm just saying that, you know, his, right. his actions on some things, Mind I think, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. It exactly. might have had good intentions. That's your problem, though. Who does he get to choose? He doesn't choose for the world. Yeah, you see this? That's true. That's true. And they're enacting a pandemic treaty, which I encourage all of you to go to your congressman about because they're taking out your sovereign rights and they want to put a framework up. In Geneva, Switzerland, they're meeting all the, the WHO and Klaus Schwab, and they're putting a pandemic treaty that all countries have to bow to whatever dictates they demand. This is scary beyond belief. Yeah, it's, it's control measure. So this is control, this is suppression. And what are we to do is shuck off the oppression, what Enoch is telling us. Live in a pure heart, make pure actions. And we have to think wisely 
Don't don't always believe what you read. Okay? Do your own research. And that's what I will encourage everyone to do. Do you see that? Yeah. So what I want to do is have just a beautiful end piece here with the whole piece. Okay. <laughs> I could talk all the time, but I and I wanted to um, I wanted you to see too uh, and encourage you to show you the 12 planets and then I want to tell you the Hopi's prophecies and we'll have like a beautiful little sound meditation but this is with the just so you know I mean this exists this is VA243 the Babylonian cylinders um, and this is the Akkadian cylinder seal it dates back to at least the third millennium BC located at the State Museum in East Berlin ancient Sumerians knew about our complete solar system in the third millennium. And so they have, I mean, this exists. How did they know? You know, how did they know this, right? So I was just trying to, to print that off just so you guys can see it exists. If you want, you can go look it up, right? So, and, and they had 12 planets. And then all of a sudden there's another one that shows 11 planets, which gives credence to the fact that one planet slammed into the other, right? Which, you know, we're talking, yes. So this is just to show you where and where you can get it. You can just go online and look at this. This is Sumerian? Yeah, this is Sumerian. This is from, uh, what's the name, David? Uh, uh, no, this is just in the State Museum I mean, yeah, in East Berlin. You can see that. And so then I just wanted to give you a little bit of the Hopi prophecy. And... Uh, the Hopi prophecy was relayed in this, hang on, I'm going to give, give them to you what they are. And I was lucky enough, this is from the Hopi themselves. This book was gifted to me, and it's very precious. Do you see that? I have, a, the other one, I listed all the planets. The Tiamat, uh, sure, you, you'll see it on the other one. But you, all you have to do is plug that number in and put the Babylonian uh, you know, cylinder seals, and it'll come up. Where do you get 12? Where you'll see it on here. There's 12 on this one. I just put I was trying to print it, and oh, it cut it, it off. It, 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 that one will have more of that one cut off. There's one. Oh, yeah. That one, and I, and I listed <laughs> it there. Okay, yeah. This book is literally the Hopi's book, and I was gifted it. It was called A Vision of Hope, and this is from the women's, uh, you'll see the, the women, the clans come together, and this is what they're saying. This was transcribed from a tape lecture by Harley Swift Deer, and he's Hopi, from 1983. Throughout the ages, humanity has sought out the prophecies of the spiritually gifted to instill a clear hope and vision into life. During this time, many prophecies come to us trying to lead us into many different directions. Some prophesize points of disaster, hopelessness, and the, the, the end of mankind. But other prophecies create a vision of joyful transformation throughout quantum leaps into love and light. That's exactly what we were talking about, right? This was written in 1983 by the Hopis. We are dreamers, and we create physical reality through the thought forms we hold. As things stand now, the human race is dreaming a hell. But as individuals and as a collective humanity, it is our potential to dream of paradise. That's why I wanted to do the paradise center. And to create the kingdom of heaven on our mother earth. Could it be that the pain in our hearts caused by the hell we have created will spur us on into visions and creations of a world formed in love? That's the pure heart that Enoch speaks about. It is my prayer and dream, along with a multitude of others who have taught me to dream the rainbow dream. And that's what I want us to do. 
to each and every one of you learn to dream both while awake and sleeping, the dream of unity and love through divine transformation. This prophecy on the following pages is a dream and vision that is a potential reality for mankind. It is not an ultimatum, but it is ours to behold and to create if we only dare to dream together. So today we're going to dream together for a few minutes, and then I wanted to share with you one of his prophecies. That is exactly, this was done in 1983, and he's talking about his prophecies. But that's exactly what we just talked about. The AI, the technology, all these decisions, just like maybe perhaps what they were doing in the last room. This year is critical, the year of the animal, the year of 20, the dark force. The reason for this is that the three years seeds of light have been planted and we are starting to grow and the teachings are starting to come out and all those ones inside each of the eight great powers who have taught partial truths. Who have taught, you see that, the partial truths? <laughs> so we were talking about with Gates, right? who have taught partial truths and who have taught deliberate lies in myth, and who have used the power of wheels to gain control of people, to gain followers, to gain disciples, to gain devotees, are going to be threatened by the awakening of the consciousness of the rainbow people. So that's what we have to do today, is we are to become the priesthood in the latter days of Melchizedek, the rainbow people, that the wonderful Kobe is telling us, right? Because the rainbow people exist in every country and in every nation and in every land. In other words, the sun dancers are going to be strong enough. The dark forces will be extremely threatened and they will use their power and their power exists in technology. We are going to see some of the most strong technological advancements known to humanity occurring and these very technological advances are going to be a tremendous threat as well as a blessing to the survival of humanity. So that's, they're saying that we have to establish balance and harmony between the light and dark forces. It's going to be very interesting because there's a sense of urgency. This is Grace Walkingstick is the head seer and visionary of the Black Widow Society. She said that there will be a major crisis to put us on the brink of nuclear war. And the only thing that will stop it is that the dark force is trying to create an artificial sun, which is the nuclear war, and that we must exert the influence, the sun dancers, the rainbow people here, by smoking our pipes, gathering together, and sharing our medicine. That's our knowledge, right? For solar power, for world peace, whatever else happens, we must not give into the energy of the fear. That's the Hopi prophecy. So we are to become the rainbow people. We are to carry the knowledge that was instructed to us from Enoch, from the Adams. You see this? And make the right choices by having discernment, going directly to source. So mindful of the time, can you start the sound bowls going? And we'll just have a beautiful closing. And if there's any other questions, we can at least sign off and those who want to stay can stay. Beautiful. So let's take a beautiful deep breath in. And feel the undercurrent of love.
take a beautiful breath. Connect with Source. As the Hopi say, we are to become the rainbow people. And on this beautiful rainbow of light, let us emit our light, all the beautiful dimensions of light within us. Extend, extend, extend your light, your love reaching all mankind, all animals, the waters, dolphins, the birds, Mother Earth herself. We are in sync with Mother Earth. We can feel her innermost desires and know what is right. Her desires and now connect Go to source, prime creator, father, mother, God. We bring heaven to earth and the knowledge. We are the custodians of that knowledge, special in God's eyes. We are the custodians of earth, our loved ones. Let us go to source and receive that which is right and holy, for we then know what to do here on earth during this time of great change. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Feel the breath of the divine creator within you. As above, so below, as within. We are made of stardust. We commune with the heavens. We are particles of light on earth. And we can receive the holy of mysteries. Receive them now. Love. Light. We are one. We become the rainbow people. Love divine. Cherished above all. We ask for discernment. We ask for wisdom. We ask for knowledge from the divine creator God. Opening all chakra points up. Lifting ourselves and our consciousness to heaven. Receiving the knowledge that is thy knowledge from God. What is right? What is holy? Bring that in now with knowingness, with purity, asking for discernment and wisdom. And now asking for courage and love to be supported in our endeavors on earth as we help enlighten ourselves and all those that we love and touch. We light the world and bring it to a beautiful, graceful ascension, the golden age. Breathing in, breathing out, connecting with source. You are the divine incarnated on earth to now. Our divine Father and Mother's glories. Be at peace, so that love to be go forth in this beautiful world. All right, so I'm going to close the service now. If we have any more questions, what I will do is uh, see if there's anyone on Zoom or Facebook before we close off. If there are any other questions, beautiful. I'm going to see this, and I will go ahead and close off on Facebook Live. Thank you for attending and bringing your lovely light.